All right. Good morning, everybody. And thanks for joining me this morning as I uh, go through the uh, list of offers available out there. And I have a window of myself open in the background. There we go. All better. <laughs> and uh, yeah, <clears throat> I'll, let's just start digging through to whatever price changes might have happened during the uh, the evening. If you uh, want a hand in picking the right uh, desktop computer, laptop, uh, tablet, or even smartphone for your own need, let me know and we can look into it together. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, my plans for today, um, hoping to do a few updates this morning and um, maybe not everything. We'll see how things go essentially, but uh, my plan is to uh, maybe do an hour or two of this. And hopefully this afternoon I can come back and uh, do something a little different. Uh, I might be streaming a game this afternoon. Uh, I I really want to go back to Signal from Tolva, which is a first-person exploration slash shooter game that was released last year. And they released a new campaign for it entirely free uh, a few weeks ago and uh, they've had the chance to release a few uh, performance upgrades since so uh, i'm hoping to stream that this afternoon so let's get to work i've got uh in theory i've got uh, over 500 links to check this morning i'm probably not going to be doing all that i'll just try to make sure i cover the uh, most important stuff and uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'll just complete whatever's left during the evening. So I hope everybody's having a good weekend so far. Uh, whether your plans involve shopping for tech or not, whether you're Canadian or not. And the way the stream works, I don't, uh, I don't really share my screen the way a lot of people would. What you see behind me is whichever device I'm currently working on. Uh, basically, a quick summary of how it compares to other similar devices and uh, what programs it can run and how well. So uh, that way you can follow along as I update my, uh, well, I do my um, data entry for the morning. And uh, that way it's a little bit easier to follow me around as I go through this. Right. So there's coupons going on right now on the HP store, which means that uh, they're uh, quite competitive concerning pricing if you wanted to buy an HP laptop or desktop from uh, your local retailer. Yeah, yesterday I uh, published tech word buying for the long weekend. So if you want the uh, two minute and a half cliff notes of uh, what I'm doing currently, you can get access to that. And basically get a list of recommendations to start your search this weekend. All right. 
right, so that one is, yeah, online and in stores at the source. Microbyte has it available and well online. Yeah, I've got a few things to finish by the time I start streaming Signal from Tolva this afternoon. Um, started converting the software pages to include them. Um, well, to include links to where you might be able to get it. And I am uh, starting to factoring game consoles as well. I might, might start to uh, run some comparison of those, well, or at least price checking and that sort of thing. Um, just have to figure out how I'll be uh, sorting things out and all of that, because when it comes to comparing um, comparing consoles and PCs in terms of uh, gaming, it's not exactly... Uh, a fair comparison so I'll have to see how I will be handling that but I think I can manage that in, uh, in a pretty efficient manner just that yeah the uh, Getting specs on those devices is not going to be the easiest thing out there. And the thing is, I'm mostly interested in their software, to be honest. Well, that then. You know, deal tracking what I'm doing this morning essentially. <clears throat> because, yeah, when it comes to um, Game console, it's not about the hardware, it's about the games that are available for it. I already have a guide to that on my uh, blog, including calculator of how it costs to game on different platforms, including game consoles, including PCs and whatnot. And that way it's possible to... Uh, well, no ahead of time how much you're going to pay for your games and all of that. So uh, I'm, I started adding links to uh, software listing as well. And I started listing where you can get them for consoles too. So that if you're, uh, I'll be able to advise uh, console gamers a little better. Not sure how far I'll be able to take it. Simply because, well, there is not a lot of logic involved in picking a game console, really. It's not that game consoles are not a good choice necessarily. It's just that... Well, the method to pick the right game console is essentially to pick whatever game consoles all of your friends have. That way you can trade games, that way you can play together if you play multiplayer games. 
and all of that uh it's uh, really being different from the rest of the pack is uh, not going to help you much in that case so actually following trends with game consoles is probably the wisest thing you could do There's a little bit of cross-platform gaming starting to happen, and we're we're losing the the ability to uh, share our games more and more as well. So eventually, we'll be able to uh, start well, pick the right one for you instead of uh, just following what your friends have. But uh, currently. You better stick uh, staying with your group there. That way you can share resources and share experiences together. And yeah, I've been able to uh, a run calculation on how much it costs to be a PC gamer versus being a console gamer and uh, yeah currently the PC is well it's not the cheapest thing but it's far from being the most expensive too if you're curious the most expensive game console to own right now is the Xbox One X that thing will cost you something like nearly $500 a year And the least expensive right now would be the, um, sorry, not the Nintendo Switch, but the um, playing on mobile. So with an iPad, for instance, that will cost you roughly $100 a year. And yeah, that was a fun little calculator to put together. Definitely had a lot of fun with that, but that's that's the that's probably something that most people won't be able to relate to. <laughs> Slowly going through my list. Starting with the uh, most popular items and slowly going down the list after that. Usually there aren't a lot of surprise on Saturday, which is one of the reasons why I'm planning to uh, keep this morning stream relatively short
Okay, so that one is back as a certified open box online at Best Buy. Well, this one's still unavailable at eBay. Ooh. Mm. Sorry about that. Sometimes those Friday schedule really drain me out. Makes talking a little difficult sometimes. And yeah, it's early morning for me. I'm uh, a little disadvantaged by my um, location right now because of the uh, time zone. In Alberta here, I'm in the uh, mountain time time zone, which means I'm two hour behind uh, most of my visitors right now. Most are in the... Uh, Toronto and or Montreal area. Edmonton and Cal Calgary, I think, are at number six and seven or something like that. Also get a fair amount of visitors from the States right now, especially regarding um, Fortnite. I get a lot of uh, visitors looking for computer to run Fortnite right now which is a little bit refreshing for me 
for the longest time Rainbow Six Siege was the undisputed king on my site. Surprises me a little bit. As far as I know, that game is not that popular. But I might be wrong. Also know I did several updates to um, software listings recently. Uh, there is definitely new spec. The minimal specs to run Arc, for instance, have changed quite a lot since last time I had them updated. So I did update that. Also included the console version for whoever is interested. Uh, I seem to remember um, PUBG also getting a little bit of a, how would I say, getting a little bit more demanding in terms of uh, hardware requirements. Sorry, concentration this morning is a little bit scarce. And yeah, I'm experimenting with schedule right now to uh, do those streams for. And yeah, since I have to do those things in the morning, including on Saturday morning, where my head is uh, definitely not at its best, um, makes the stream a little bit harder on me, especially since, well, there's usually not a lot of activity here. I'm usually by my own, which is normal, especially uh, at the beginning. But yeah, user interactions makes those stream a lot easier to do. It helps me, uh, it helps me stay in the game when uh, someone is there and actually interacting with me, whether it's an actual pertinent question and context or not. But yeah, it's a little bit of an uncommon product that I'm streaming right now, so uh, yeah, I'm not exactly surprised. And I'm not sure that most people who would, have, would like to, let's say, ask question or stuff like that, would actually be willing to... Uh, well, open a Twitch or a YouTube account to chat with me. What you doing, Willow? My dog's doing weird things. Sorry about that. So yeah, those updates in the morning kind of forced me to uh, do things a little earlier than um, would be advisable, I'd say. So it's pretty common for me to be, uh, well, especially on Saturday morning, it's a little harder to concentrate. I'm usually quite slow on Saturdays. So I think I'm planning on doing another week of uh, streaming on the current schedule. 
And since chat has been entirely silent for something like three weeks at this point, I'm pretty sure I'm going to stop the stream and I'll see what I do. I know I wanted to uh, start streaming games. Just don't have the uh, perfect setup for that. And um, when it comes to gaming, I'm a little bit of a weirdo. I have, uh, well, my appreciation of games is uh, differs from the norm quite a bit. So finding something that I actually like playing is actually very difficult. Which is one reason I wanted to, uh, it sounded like a good idea to do it with Signal from Tolva. I actually enjoyed that game quite a bit. Got a tug that were right strings for me and and it's probably the only game I've completed and completed most of the achievements even uh, in the last, let's say, three, maybe even five years. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that my gaming channel is not going to be popular either. I'm not going to be playing anything that uh, is really going to be, um, you know, very much in demand or anything like that. Usually cannot afford games when they come out either, so... Uh, I'm not going to be treading new, new grounds either. Ah, of course. The uh, Best Buy system that uh, impressed me with its price and specs yesterday is obviously already out of stock. Wish I was surprised, but yeah. $2,000 for a gaming, uh, gaming rig with uh, all the bells and whistles and uh, 1080 Ti graphics card in it. And even uh, 32 gigs of RAM, which is more than you need. Over 16 usually, you're just spending money. But two grand for that hardware configuration, that was uh, pretty impressive. Which is why I'm not surprised that it's already out of stock. But yeah, I'll have to uh, see what I do in terms of uh, streaming in the future. Maybe a long form version of uh, tech word buying on Saturdays where I could go over my uh, recommendation and see what's available. Um, just yeah, as I as I already <laughs> told this morning, there's always those cases where You know, deals that are available on Friday sometimes are gone Saturday. So we need to be able to uh, adapt to that.
So we've already covered all the essentials here. So now I'm just retreading popular devices and uh, Sorry, totally lost track there. Yeah, definitely looks like I'll have to find something different in terms of uh, in terms of show. Now, of course, it's not necessarily the best time of the year for technology shopping. Well, in terms of popularity, at least. Prices this weekend are actually pretty good. The uh, average price of tech dropped very markedly uh, on Thursday. So on average, choices are much better than they used to be. Uh, and it's due in part of uh, the quantity of rebates shut up during their same period. And the generosity of uh, the average re generosity of rebates is uh, holding relatively uh, stable right now. So as a result, yeah, it's um, we add something relatively different in terms of uh, numbers were relatively similar one month ago. But uh, generosity of rebates then was much lower. So I would say that uh, it's overall it's a better time right now. But yeah, overall figures have uh, relatively little bearing over what your experience or what kind of deal you're going to be able to uh, access personally. Just have to keep an eye on your um, making sure the right stuff is available. And I would say that uh, what I think is the best way to do that would be to uh, basically find the uh, archetype that uh, resembles you the most and uh, keep an eye on it. I want to eventually start doing email notification for that. Just didn't finish implementing the whole thing. And I think the plans I had for that a few months ago were already in line with uh, the new European Convention laws the, although the data i have is really not of much use to someone from europe right now i try to uh, accommodate visitors from other uh, overseas and uh, display data that will be uh, useful to them but yeah, I'm a little bit of a local site. I'm most, I will be most potent for people in Canada. 
simply because yeah I was a little sick of going over um, and basically seeing reviews for devices which weren't even sold here or that you could import from the US but would have to pay such high import fees on them that uh, it wasn't even worth it really in the end so most of the tech advice well at least for shopping for a specific device um, I found was uh, well it was a very frustrating process there was every time you thought you found something interesting you discovered that uh, oh yeah of course that one is not for me <laughs> I I'm kind of it's it's the right product for my needs but that product is not available to my nationality So that's why that's uh one of the reasons why it why tech advisor it exists at this point. Just to try to reduce that frustration for my fellow Canadians. And hoping there's enough Canadians to uh, support my activities as well. But yeah, somehow Fortnite attracted a lot of Americans to my site. So apparently I am doing something different. And I did modify the uh, software pages so that I could recommend typical configurations that, uh, well, modern configurations that are probably useful to Americans. I'm not necessarily going by the uh, minimum requirements exactly as uh, described on the uh, on the, uh, the 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 game page uh, from official sources I'm instead going over and uh, finding well, if you go in stores right now, a computer which will be able to run this according to developer recommendations is going to have this kind of hardware in it. Which means that, yeah, most of the time you're going to have more RAM in there, for instance. That is what is uh, described as uh, the required amount. It will, however, give you a list of modern CPUs and GPUs that are equivalent to whatever they're describing as the minimum in there, because usually they will use old hardware as the minimum, which is great if, uh, if your question is, is my current computer able to run this game? However, if you're in a situation where, okay, I need a new computer and I need the new computer to be able to run this game, then um, you will want to, well, basically you, you will be buying something modern and you, you will need a little bit of translation for that. All right, five visitors right now, they're all from the US. And most of them, two of them are there for Fortnite, one for Maya, one for Civ 6, one for Stellaris. At least it's a pretty interesting. Uh, it's interesting to see what is interesting. Someone is even trying to uh, find a netbook able to run Fortnite. 
Not sure it's the most yeah, advisable thing out there, but uh, I don't know exactly what their situation is. But yeah, it definitely looks like I'll need to figure some kind of uh, some new show. Because what I've got going right now is definitely not the best. It's not attracting people, people are not interested. It might work during peak season, so I'll probably bring it back around September and uh, after that probably October, well November to December. Probably have a show on I could do a show for Boxing Day. The only problem is that that means that I would probably be streaming that on uh, the 24th at night. Not sure my wife would like me doing that. But yeah, I'm giving giving this morning stream another week pretty much and after that I'll try to figure something different. Right now people are not even watching my um they're not even watching tech word buying that much. Even though that I will continue to do. Even though I probably spend more time making and editing that two and a half, or to be uh, precise, two and a third uh, minute long video than I am in doing my morning streams, which are two or three hours each. And I could probably do it faster. I'm probably the one to blame for how much time it takes to do. Even though I've got a pretty good workflow going on on tech board buying right now. Um, the only thing is, yeah, the, uh, the whole rush and the amount of work that goes into just putting the list and the new email version newsletter out there usually after that it's very hard for me to uh, concentrate enough to uh well essentially put the uh, video version together efficiently Yeah, that whole process takes a lot out of it, out of me. <clears throat> and usually by the time the after the newsletter is out, I'm struggling to even stay awake. So that's uh, that's probably one of big reason why it takes so long to write those things. Although was really happy with the new tools Grammarly put together when I went to edit my um, 
my script yesterday i really enjoyed that they have a spoken length calculator in there that really helped me uh figuring out all if i needed to uh, trim or make things a little longer Maybe I should look into specialized tools to uh, help me with the length of what I'm writing. Try to have a section of relatively equal length. Because right now it's definitely not the case and it's not always the length of the paragraph which is what i'm going by right now although i'll not i'm a pretty bad at uh, narration overall my um, delivery is not definitely not equal I have weird slowdowns and speed ups. And I don't realize I'm doing them. So yeah, in many ways I'm doing work which I'm not very well suited for. Just trying to give some kind of a behind the scene look at what is going on on Tech Advisor. Among other things, because it would be very easy for a visitor to just assume that the whole thing's automated, that I'm just another prize grabber, essentially. And that all the work is done by robots. I have some automation in place, yes, uh, but it's uh, most of the work is done by me. And definitely lately automation has been failing me as well, so yeah, I have to pivot again. And find some new way. Yeah, just try to find some way to, uh, well, reach the people I need to reach and uh, help them the best I can. Interesting, price drop at Best Buy. They say it's $100 off, but really it it's a $50 off. Or at least compared to yesterday's pricing. Sometimes there's a bit of a change. Although usually on Saturdays from Best Buy I see prices go up, not down. So, price droppings, I'm always good with that.
Yeah, and more things go, the more my traffic sources are dominate, dominated by uh, the United States. And I'll have to figure out uh, what I can do to uh, serve American visitors better. Because <clears throat> it's definitely not playing to the strengths of uh, techadvisor.ca. And I don't think I can provide the same service to Americans, to be, uh, to be honest. I would have more tools at my disposal, that's for sure. Several of the APIs uh, apply to basically a whistle that, uh, yeah, they had no Canadian data in there. So I could automate things for Americans a bit. just yet yeah my coverage would be very spotty I would start looking like any other automated prize grabber site out there We need to double my inventory pretty much, and I'm already struggling to keep up with the one I have now. So, I'm not sure how I could uh, capitalize on the current situation there. Because, yeah, just doing the currency conversion is not, it's not useful. I wish it was, but uh, if I just do the currency conversion, then uh, I'm missing on the entire import fees kind of category. And that can be a pretty intimidating price change. There were a few years where the Canadian dollar was pretty much equal or even higher than the American dollar in value. And uh, yeah, every once in a while I ordered from the US during that period. It was, uh, there was definitely several incentive then. But yeah. Almost every time, just the import fees made it, uh, made the experience pretty much, well, that was a waste of money. So my American visitors would be uh, facing the same situation, essentially. So yeah. Kind of of the mind that uh, bad advice is not worth giving at all. But for some reason, I seem to be of interest to, um, of limited interest to Canadians. yeah right now all i see is people from the u.s visiting my site and uh, the prices they see on uh, my listing probably look very unattractive to them because beyond the price conversion and all of that 
usually have much better offer made to them than uh, what we have here in Canada. So even though I can do, um, I can provide them with good advice to a degree. It's usually not the uh, main content of the page. It's located lower down. Basically, anyone that's uh, focused on price, yeah, from a US perspective, the prices that we have on there are <laughs> look pretty damn terrible. Maybe I should put a Canadian flag or whatever in there. Be, uh, before the uh, US, the, the uh, dollar sign in there, just to make it even clearer that I'm talking of Canadian dollars, just that. Uh, running the amount of space data takes on the page is already a little tricky. It's already something where I took a little too much expansion. So yeah, not sure exactly how I will make those uh, software pages more, uh, well, better landing page to Americans. Not sure exactly how I can. There's some good advice in there. It's just not what people will notice on their first 10 seconds on the site. And even assuming 10 seconds of uh, attention from my visitors, that's already quite presumptuous. I kind of need to get my message across faster than that. Right, so 138 still on this one. Still not convinced why some retailers hide the uh, final price behind the, uh, how would I say, the card threshold that you have to add the device to your card before you see what the real price is gonna be. Because I mean, if they have a great rebate or on something, <clears throat> <clears throat> you'd think that they want to publicize that as much as possible instead of hiding that behind a button. I'm guessing it rises the uh, conversion rate in their uh, analytics a little bit. But the thing is, if you click on something to see the price and then the price is eh, you know, it's probably not going to result in a final conversion. It's going to attract more people in your funnel, but uh, not sure it's going to really translate in the action you want. But yeah, that means that it's me mostly talking of SEO and uh, business stuff this morning. Which is not necessarily the most interesting topic out there. Hmm. 
It is, however, the, what I uh, the type of information I get the most right now from my um, visitors, really. So we've got Toronto and Ottawa right now. And Dell is out of that specific model currently. There's a slight change there. So yeah, pretty much ended up depressing myself with this stream this morning, which is one reason why I'm planning to stop this, unless next week is uh, very, very successful compared to what I'm doing right now. Right now, I'm definitely failing at, uh, well, helping anybody. Uh, got a price drop on, um, really that much. Yeah, it's the right device. Because the site says the price dropped by $70. It's closer to 200 actually. So 
So yeah, if you want a certified open box desktop computer instead of uh, $640, it's actually uh, $360. Online only. Not the uh, most powerful computer there, but for everyday needs, it's a pretty good deal still. Uh, the new ver the the one in a new condition is definitely still uh, out of stock. It's been out of stock since yesterday. Here's a convertible notebook. Kind of like the idea of those uh, convertible Chromebooks, especially now that they run Android. Considering that there hasn't been a new Android tablet for the last three to four years at this point. It starts to feel like this might be what the future of the uh, Google brand of tablet might be. Makes quite a bit of sense too. It's now becoming almost difficult to find a tablet without a keyboard, which I think is just a bad mix, really. Usually you just end up with a worst, uh, with a worst laptop that costs you need sometimes twice the price. So uh, personally, I see that way as a dead end. Simply because, yeah, the uh, the bang for the buck is terrible in that avenue. So yeah, a Chromebook, which you can already use as a laptop fairly efficiently. It's cost effective. It's sicker out of the right of the bat compared to, especially compared to a Windows data computer. Although the Android side of things is definitely quite exposed. There's that. Um, But yeah, at the same time, considering there's so little done for Android tablets, that way you combine the full desktop experience of having a real browser, which personally is the reason why I have a Chromebook, with uh, a full feature Android tablet, but you didn't have to pay for the tablet separately. <coughs> Hmm. Sounds like a better deal to me. And personally, I love my Chromebook. I'm very happy with that. I had to go east and visit my family in January this week. Yeah, this year. And yeah, I I had to get a laptop for my secondary job just to be able to keep an eye on things while I was away. And uh, to be honest, I was working the whole time when I was over there. But the truth is, is I didn't use the laptop once. 
I was in a Chromebook the whole time. I also brought a tablet with me. I don't think I used that one either. But then again, I'm mostly uh, a web kind of guy. My workflow is mostly on the web and all of that. So I'm kind of adapted to that sort of device very well. But the thing is, most people are. Uh, there's a few exceptions. There's that uh, perception that um, people want to have access to Word and Excel. And for most people, I think it's not true. I definitely ran an experiment myself when I got started on my own as a, as a freelancer. And uh, my last job was very Microsoft Office oriented. So one of the um, one of the things I wanted to test when I got started in business was, uh, you know what? I'd rather not spend money on the Microsoft Office. Let's see if I really need it. The answer was I didn't need it at all. I've been doing without Office for the last. How many years has it been? I think it's seven years. So yeah, seven years without the uh, Microsoft Office suite. I do most of my stuff in Google Drive. It's got pretty much all the features I need. Um, and for very few documents like my bookkeeping and stuff like that, stuff that I might prefer not having in the cloud anyway. Uh, I'm just using LibreOffice. And so far I'm very happy with all of that. One of the surprises I definitely got was I was expecting to uh, get the Adobe Creative Suite. The only thing is that I never, never got a job that involved the Creative Suite. I thought that would be most of what I would be doing, but the truth is most of the work I did, uh, I did in uh, probably NetBeans, which is just an ID for several languages, mostly using PHP and uh, JavaScript myself. But yeah, I haven't been doing any graphic design since I got uh, started on my own. And I do miss Adobe Illustrator a little bit. But the thing is, I found such great alternatives to most of the program I needed. And I tried to find several non-free alternatives. Really, I tried. But I would always come back to the open source alternatives. 
So yeah, right now I'm streaming with OBS. Uh, and I know there's some kind of a non-free version probably coming down the pipe or something like that. So we'll see how that evolves, but uh, so far OBS has been great. And uh, let's see, so OBS for streaming, video editing I do in Shotcut. Which is another open source program, it's very good too. I really like the fact that, uh, sure the uh, audio toolkit in there might not be the most robust or the most full featured. But I love that they have an equalizer that works in the LUFS in there right off the bat, which means that when you upload to YouTube, you can master your sound to that, right? In a nearly automated fashion. So that bit has been very good. Uh, what else? Inkscape. Inkscape is pretty great. I just have crashes issue on Windows with that one. So worst case scenario, I switch to Linux and handle it that way. Um, but I haven't found a good Illustrator replacement yet. You know, something with good smart guides and that allow you to apply brushes to uh, pads and stuff like that. That's what I'm looking for personally. So if, if anyone know a good program out there for vector illustration with those features, by all means, let me know. I'd be very curious to try it. I'm definitely willing to pay for that too. Just not, you know, 20 bucks a month. Definitely not against subscriptions. I've got several on several programs I'm running. Just that uh, 20 bucks a month on something I use, I would say almost for fun. It's a little too high for me. So I'd be more likely to buy a program And if it has to be over $100, let's say. I wouldn't guarantee that I would get every update every year. I would probably st stretch my purchase there. As much as I like to uh, stay up to date and all of that. Mm. But yeah, that's that's the thing with subscription. The price is usually not that bad. It's just that uh, if I'm going to pay $240 a year for, let's say, Illustrator. And I don't need any of the other perks that come with the uh, Adobe Creative Suite, really. Yeah, it kind of stinks to pay $200, $240 for something that I just use for fun. And essentially spend more money on that than I do on anything else, even though everything else is a lot more useful to me right now.
Because, yeah, honestly, I use Grammarly a whole lot more. I use Todoist a whole lot more. And I pay uh, premium fees for both of those. And the, the nice thing about it is that I didn't even have to. I just started paying for those two services because they had treated me so well during my tryout phases that I started paying in order to support them. Not really pay using the extra features. I like the advanced corrections and Grammarly and all of that, especially the newest version that I got to try this with yesterday. I was uh, very happily surprised with that. Um, so that bit is nice, and I do use the advanced correction settings in there. Um, as I said, I don't use the Microsoft Office suite at all, so I'm not benefiting from their plugins whatsoever. Because essentially, they don't work in any of the word processors that I use. Doesn't work with LibreOffice, doesn't work with... Uh, doesn't work with uh, Google Drive and uh, Google Docs at all. So really, I'd care about those a whole lot more than the uh, Microsoft Office Suite. So yeah, I'm more or less throwing my money at Grammarly just for... just as a mark of appreciation, really. And because it's one of the most useful... Oh, there was an extra coupon I could put in there. Going back to the uh, HP desktop there. And... Uh, nice. So we can take off 25 bucks on this tower. So yeah, I use Grammarly all the time. I most of my promotional content goes is in written form, really. Even though I do a fair amount of videos and all of that, I have to write about most of the thing I do. So. Yeah, money I spend there compared to what I would spend for, let's say, Illustrator or the uh, Creative Suite, it's, it just doesn't compare. And then there's Todoist, and uh, it's pretty much the same thing. I got notifications and... Um, A few neat features. I like the idea of location based notification on tasks. Really, I don't use them that much. Main reason why I'm paying for Todoist is that, well, some of the other Productivity suites I used in the past just stopped their operation at some point. And I know it's important to support the services you, uh, you depend on. And yeah, it's just me supporting them. I pay them because they've been treating me very well. I wanted to return the favor and, you know, help them stay in business. So 
So yeah, subscriptions, freemiums and all of that, I'm absolutely in support of those. And I'm happy to pay for, you know, a good service. But yeah, I haven't find, found that value in either the Microsoft Office Suite or uh, the Adobe Creative Suite. I'll be perfectly honest there. If I worked a lot with photos, I would probably consider the, um, I would probably consider Paint Shop Pro. Pricing on those is actually pretty good. And the feature set is really good too. I'm a little buttered that they, it's only available for Windows, however. So whenever I look at some new program, I try to find something I can run on pretty much anything. If I can even run it on my uh, Chromebook, then it's a big plus. Because I tend to try a lot of different things. in terms of, you know, computer platforms and all of that. And I value my freedom of movement pretty highly. You know, not m physical movement, but more movement from one uh, ecosystem to the next. Whenever I see a company try to lock me in, usually my reaction will be to get out of there. All right, and I've reached pretty much the time where I was thinking to stop. Let's see. Okay, I'm at 39% of the work I was hoping to do. Uh, not hoping to do, sorry. Total amount of work. And I've done 200 links this morning. And that, I'm a little bit less than, or how long have I been streaming? Yeah, an hour and a half, that's pretty good. I'll just try to get to 40%, make that a nice round number. And then I'll go stretch my legs, do a few things around the house, and hopefully I'll be back this afternoon for a little bit of signal from Tolva, which I've been wanting to play for a while now. Just need to uh, update the listing for signal from Tolva on techadvisor.ca. Also, don't have, um, I don't have, uh, how would I say, a scene there for um, intermissions yet while I stream games. So I'll probably want to uh, design something real quick for that. Just to help tie the stream up to. Uh, TechAdvisor.cll. All right, and here's the forty percent I was aiming for. 
So that's it for me today. Um, I'll leave you with uh, a list of um, recommendations per uh, user archetypes. And um, yeah, I'll see you later for Signal from Tolva. Ciao, everyone.